All right, today I'm going to answer the question, how much vitamin D should you take when you're supplementing? I'm also going to cover the benefits of vitamin D, symptoms that you're really low, what should your levels be, best ways to get your vitamin D, and what about vitamin K? So there's quite a couple number of things that I'm going to answer in this video. I am Robin, nutritionist from Necessary Nutrition, and I'm gonna put this disclaimer in there just so that you have this. This content of this presentation is solely for educational purposes and increasing awareness. I have to say this, the information, advice, guidelines, dietary, dietary modifications and food supplementation presented here does not constitute the practice of medicine and is not intended as a substitute for any medical counseling. If you are sick or you suspect you have a medical problem, we urge you to seek the advice of your medical doctor or other qualified health care providers. Never delay in seeking professional medical advice just because you have read or seen something on social media or the internet. I'm always going to encourage you to do your own research. I've been a nutritionist for 16 years now. My love and my passion, and I always want to bring you good information that you can use. I primarily work with women over 40 to help them up-level their nutrition. I'm also very passionate about helping you, if you are a woman over 40, mitigate symptoms and concerns related to perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause. So we're going to get into how much vitamin D you should take. I would love to encourage you to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to this video and this channel, or subscribe to this channel. And please do give me your feedback and ask me questions as we proceed. Vitamin D is critical to human health, and it is part of my mission to make sure that all of you know why and that you are getting adequate vitamin D. It is estimated that 40% of the population is deficient in vitamin D, and if you are Black, then this number nearly doubles. So if you are Black or have melanated skin or darker skin, you are more likely than not to be deficient, and if it's critical to human health, then what does that say for our health status? I've seen it so often that people are going to the doctors for all these symptoms, given medication, and it really was as a result of their low vitamin D. So let's start there. Vitamin D helps to support your immune function, the healthy insulin secretion, your growth of normal cells, strengthens your teeth, your bone, your muscles, improves how our hormones function, can help with depression, anxiety, and mood. So a lot going on with vitamin D. I don't think it's talked about enough. It's an easy deficiency to have, but also an easy one not to have. Symptoms that you are low, overly anxious, feeling down in the dumps, tired, muscle weaknesses, bone pain, hair loss, weakened immune system, to name a few. So I encourage you to get your vitamin D levels checked when you go to your doctor and get your annual. Don't let them not check your vitamin D. Insist that your D is checked. And the best ways to get your vitamin D, and I am going to tell you what your vitamin D level should be, so hang on. The most effective place or the best source is the sunlight without sunscreen. So if you're spending 15 minutes a day in the sun, it's a very powerful way to get your vitamin D, but for the fact that so many of us are not in the sun. We work inside, we're inside a lot, and depending on where you are in the country, vitamin D is not always readily available. As I'm recording this video, it is the summertime, it is very, very hot, and then no one wants to be out in the sun in this heat wave, but vitamin D is most available to us in the sun. The fact that we're not getting it is why supplementation becomes pretty important for us. You can get it from food, but not in abundance. So food-wise, egg yolk, salmon, cod liver oil, tuna. So the fatty fish, you can get it from mushrooms. And there's foods that have been fortified with vitamin D, but that is not the best source. The best source, number one, is from the sun. Your second best source then would be supplementation. And I take a vitamin D3, K2 on a daily. I'm going to explain why K2 is beneficial for you. 
So what's the right dose of vitamin D for you? This is like the number one question that I get. And I, I will define the right dosage of vitamin D as that do dosage required for you to achieve your blood levels between 60 and 80. And that is the range where your body is most supported. So let's talk about that range between 60 and 80. And let's talk about the whole, whole range of where your vitamin D can land so that you're empowered. My intention is so that you are empowered. When you go to your doctor, you ask them to run your vitamin D, they give you the result. Let's see if you're maximally supported. So if you are below 20, then you're insufficient. Insufficient, you're just, you do not have enough. Now you might be at 30 and then your doctor say, well, you're fine. That's like minimum wage, right? You can function on minimum wage, but are you doing the best that you can be? If you're at 30 with your vitamin D, is that the best that you can be? No. So on this slide, it says ideal levels between 40 and 80. And I would love to really make that change verbally. It should be 60 and 80. Your doctor is not going to tell you that you are deficient if you are in the 30s, 40s range. Again, you're at the, at the minimum wage level. So if you want to get yours up, then you want to get it between 60 and 80. When I was first started being really paying attention to my vitamin D, I was at, in the 40s. And I wanted to be maximally supported. And so I'm now personally at around 65 and I take 5,000 IVs a day. Toxicity is above 150, but that's not very easy to get. It's possible, but you would really be have, you'd have to take so much. So if you want to get your body in that maximally supported range, I recommend between 60 and 80. So you go and get your level checked and you're at 30, you're not technically deficient but you can use the boost. So let's talk about what happens when you're in the 60 to 80 range. Your risk for cancer is suppressed. It's, so it's just discouraging out of control cells. And if you're like me, that's what you wanna do. You want to support your body. There's a lot going on in this world, a lot. So we wanna do all the things that we can do to support our bodies the best. It's your bone health is maximally supported. It's beneficial for your health, your mental health your mood, your insulin resistance, inflammatory and auto inflammatory responses and autoimmune conditions, risk reduced, and it has positive effects on your gut. So why not? Again, it's an easy deficiency to have, but also an easy deficiency not to have. Like legitimately, not expensive. Get it through supplementation. So how much should you take? I want you to take a, a picture of this slide so that you have it, I'm gonna stay here for a second. And I'm referencing Dr. William Davis, who's a cardiologist and a health crusader with this. As I told you, I take 5,000 IUs daily. I used to take less, but then when I knew where I was, then I increased. If you don't know where you are, if you have no idea what your vitamin D levels are, then you can start off at around uh, 2,500 IUs if you have no idea. But once you know, then you know what to do. That makes sense, right? You don't want to start off the maximum if you have no idea where you stand, but this is a calculation. So take a picture of this slide or review this video so that you have this information and you can do the calculation. So again, I personally take 5,000 IUs a day of D3K2 when I was none the wiser and I had no idea where I was. I was taking about 2,500 a day. If you're low, you're going to... I recommend you get rechecked at four months so that you know where you are and you're making progress. The question comes up, you know, about toxicity. Again, toxicity is above 150. It's not common, but it, it does happen. And if you're low, really, really low, between, but below 20, your doctor may prescribe you 50,000 in a week. So you're mega dosing. If you Google, right, there's some outdated information. It might say, 600 to 800 IU a day. That's not going to do much for you and get you anywhere. So, but that's some outdated information. All right. So I'm encouraging you again to get your vitamin D, get it, your levels checked, subscribe to the channel. I'm always going to share information that I believe that you can use, especially if you're a woman over 40 and also want, oh, K2. I don't want to not tell you about K2. 
So K2 is important because it helps give us more bone support. It helps to transport the dietary calcium that's in our body and get it to our bone away from the organs. It helps with the absorption of D3. It gives us more protection for our heart. Food sources, I always want to tell you the food sources. You can get it from fermented foods such as kefir and sauerkraut, organ meats. I eat organ meats personally. You can get it from chicken, eel, and egg yolk. Consider supplementing if you are menopausal over four, or menopausal and or over forty. You have a history of osteoporosis, uh, cardiovascular disease, gut issues. It's it's a non negotiable for me when I take the D three. I take the K two. You wouldn't take K two if you are taking any blood thinning medications or have our own kidney dialysis all right so now i'm going to realize you to, to share this video subscribe to the channel i'm always going to be sharing information that you can use and also to get your d3k2 you can grab that from necessary nutrition d3k2 unless you cannot take the k2 then you can get the d3 the necessary nutrition d3 without the k and then we also have a vegan all plant-based version of D3, uh, if you would like that as well. I'm always going to put the details in the notes below. And I think that is all for now. Peace and blessings. This is Robin, Certified Nutrition Specialist, and I'll catch you soon.